What is up guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter. So good to have you in my studio. Today, what are we talking about today? We're talking about seven ways to manage risk in a pottery studio because like many things, it comes with some risks but also like many things, the risks are very manageable. Let's get into it. Let's get started. Okay, first off, I wanna say a shout out to the sponsor of this video, EnviroCleanse. So EnviroCleanse is an air filter system that we're gonna talk about in a little bit because it's one of the seven ways to manage risks in a clay studio. So shout out to EnviroCleanse. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video and getting us your filter system in here. It's been working so good so far. All right, so what are we doing? First way to manage risk in Pottery Studio. Spoiler alert, a lot of these have to do with using water. Cleaning up things with water. So there's a few things that are the most risky in Pottery Studios, um, one of which is clay dust. So the clay dust in a pottery studio can be over a long period of time, like decades, 10, 20, 30 years, like the silica dust in clay is really bad to breathe in. So in the middle of panting, there will be a valve that closes off. Breathing easy. Go really deep breath in, really deep, blow it out easy. Keep going in. Like what? potters deal with and how important it is to keep clay dust down and all that stuff because your lungs are a filter system basically for the air mm -hmm. and yeah anyway so it it's is, scary yeah. when you read it online right well her best got a guy great job keep going So that's what we're kind of trying to minimize with all the managing the risks is keeping the dust down. So that's the main thing. Um, I'd say a few of the other risks are, you know, you, when you're a potter and you're throwing lots of pots and you're on the wheel a lot, either standing or sitting, um, it, it can be bad for your body to be in that same position over and over and over. Um, so, you know, body stuff, lung stuff is a big thing. And those are basically the two big risks. So that's what we're trying to manage. Okay. Seven ways to manage risks. Here we go. You ready? Shh. Is using a wet mop to clean. Brooms and vacuums really should never be in a pottery studio. Brooms, when you sweep that, you're just basically sweeping up clay dust into the air. And sometimes you can't even see the silica dust. So, whoo! Wet mop. There it is. Use that mop on the floor pretty regularly. Keep that dust free from the environment. That's number one. Use a wet mop. Number two is to always be wet cleaning the surfaces. So like what my basic thing that I always use is I always have a bucket of water and a sponge and that's what I'm using to clean off surfaces. So same thing, just use a lot of water. That way you just keep down the clay dust. Um, one, another pro tip to manage risk. This isn't even one of the seven. This is just bonus, a bonus one. So my old studio had a canvas top uh, work table and I did a lot of reading and research about the best worktop table for a pottery studio. And so this one is birch plywood, which so far I absolutely love it. It, the can one of the negatives about the canvas worktop table is that it holds that dust in a lot. Clay dust, we're always talking about clay dust. Um, and it wasn't as easy to clean and so this birch plywood is so good. So that's number two. Use a wet sponge, wet rag to clean up. Okay, so number three is another way to clean your floors is to actually use a hose and hose it down and then use a wet dry vac to suck it up. So if you're not like, mopping regularly and you have a really, really dirty floor, then this is a really good way to get up a lot because when you hose it down, it turns all that clay dust into slip and then you just vacuum it up and it's all gone. And so that's number three, another way to clean the floors. Oh, 
Number four is having an air filter system in your studio. And this is one that they can be pretty expensive, and but a lot of studios that do a lot of work have them because then you have your air being filtered. So in a studio like this where there's no furnace, there's no air conditioning, I mean there is an air conditioner unit up there, but um, so I was researching for an air filter system and then EnviroCleanse reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to try ours and we'll do a sponsorship collab? And I said, heck yeah, I do. So this is me opening up the EnviroCleanse filter. Ready? For a couple weeks now and you can definitely tell a difference in the air um, so you can see in there it has the big HEPA filter that has to be replaced every whatever couple years and then this or a smaller filter um, and so you just can turn it on to whisper low medium high and then when it's on high I think it says it filters the air in the studio like once like four or five times an hour or something all the air gets filtered out so I've just been running it overnight. So yeah, thanks so much to EnviroCleanse. And they're doing a special deal for this YouTube video if you go over to their website, which is linked in the description below, and you enter the code POTTER10, then you get 10% off. So if you're looking for a filter system for your studio to help uh, get all those odors and dust and to catch all the fumes and all that stuff, then go check it out. So thank you guys again. Okay, so the next way to manage risk is good ventilation. And so, same thing, we're talking about air, like the air filter system circulates the air inside and then um, takes out the particulates, but then good ventilation is just getting that fresh air in there too. So we have window here, um, we also have an exhaust fan up there to vent those fumes, and so that's just a, an exhaust fan that goes out. Um, so whenever the kilns are running, we have that on. And then we also have other windows in here too, so that, like that window over there, we open up to get good ventilation going that way. So obviously there's lots of ventilation systems that you can do. Um, we kind of do a mix of the filter system, the exhaust fan, the ventilation with the windows. And honestly, this is one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to switch studios is for the health concerns. Like that old studio uh, just was not conducive to good ventilation. It was not conducive to um, good air filter, it wasn't conducive to great cleaning. So that was why we really developed this as a long-term, like I'm gonna be doing pottery for decades and I would like to have healthy lungs for decades. So, okay, that's number five. I gotta check my notebook and see what the next one is. Next one is wearing a mask whenever working with dusty material. Can you hear me? So, whenever you work with dusty material, you can always be wearing a mask. And so this one, I'll link this one in the description below. This is the most comfortable one that I've found. Like I've worn a few, probably five different ones over the years and this one is definitely my favorite. So there's a link in the description below if you wanna go check out this one. I got it on Amazon. Um, and I will like, make like a small tiny bit of money if you order this one. But it's like, it's not that expensive and it does a really good job. So whenever I'm mixing glazes, that's the biggest time that I do this, um, that I wear this, is when I'm mixing glazes because it's really difficult to keep all the dust down when you're mixing glazes. So, whew, it's warm in here. Okay, so that's the next one, wearing a respirator mask. And then the last one, of the seven ways to manage your risk in a pottery studio is kind of the one to take care of your body. And so there's two bonus tips for this one. The first one is I throw standing up. And so opposed to a lot of people that sit down and then they're hunched over, and I wanna do a whole video about standing versus sitting and why and the benefits of it, but 
basically it's for the body mechanics and just so that you're more upright, you're not hunched over all the time, and then also like you're you're not in the same position. So when I get done with a pot, I'm not you know just putting it over. I'll take it and I'll walk somewhere, and so I'm kind of moving my body around. So that's the first way, and the second way is to get some exercise. I go wakeboarding three four times a week. I bike to work most days, and I go for swims. I'm pretty active, and so the more that you can keep your body in shape and keep your muscles in shape and the easier it's gonna be when you wanna throw 100 pots in a day or whatever, like it's just keeping your body in shape. It's also good for your lungs, for your heart, just in general. Staying in shape, exercise, get out there, be active. You know what I'm saying. So that's definitely one of the keys for me and uh, not getting burnt out is to keep staying exercising. So there you go. All right, friends, that's it for this video. Those are the seven ways to manage your risk. Shout out again to EnviroCleanse. Thank you guys so much for sending me the filter system, having me try it out. Uh, love it so far. If you're looking for different ways for a good filter system, go check them out. Link is in the description below. Use the code POTTER10 if you wanna get 10% off. Look at all these sweet pots I just got out of the kiln. I didn't film this one because to be quite honest with you, I'm a little sick of kiln unloadings. Filming them, that is. I'll never get sick of actually unloading the kilns. But man, we got some cool stuff out. I gotta show you this one, one, one thing. Look at that. Look at this thing. Is this not like the dopest pot you've ever seen? Mako, Mako's Galaxy over soft red mat. They're not even sponsoring this video. I literally just like their glazes that much. Okay, that's enough of me rambling. See you in the next one.